Hey guys, and welcome to Petrol Ped. Now, as we are all on lockdown, one of the big suggestions I had was can we have more pups please? Well, today is a beautiful sunny day. I know many of you are restricted to being in your home. You can't go outside. And if you can go outside, you have to be really careful where you go. But luckily I have a large amount of countryside at the back of my house. And this morning we're gonna take the dogs for a walk. First things first though, we have to feed them. Okay, first of all, we have to find a couple of dogs and watch the reaction as soon as they realise that, oh, there they are, look. Um, do you want your breakfast? What do you mean? Oh. Breakfast? Yeah, breakfast. Da, da, da. So, these two just think of nothing else other than their stomachs. What do you want? Some breakfast? Yes. Yeah, right, okay. I'm going to put you over here. Oh, that's, that'll do. Now then, bowls. Da, da, da. An army marches on its stomach. These two dogs march on, well, stuff you wouldn't want to eat yourself, to be honest. They both have different food, interestingly. So, <laughs> they're both jumping around like mad things. So, the younger one, Hallie, is still on a mix of tin food and dry mix. Mmm, butcher's tripe, yum. Honestly, you wouldn't want to eat this yourself. It looks minging, but she thinks it's great. So that's all good by me. The food is far, far easier. She just gets one espresso cup full of dry milk. Oh, look, there's some, look, quick, there's some on the floor. Look. Yeah. yeah, one lot of dry mix. Okay, now, ready for some prancing dogs. The older dog. Always gets fed first. Da, da, da. I'll be ready, I'll be ready, I'll be ready. Yeah! Yep. But if you want some jumping about, <laughs> we've always fed them separately since they were. Da, da, da. <laughs> ready? There you go. You can't have finished that already. You can it. Oh man, she just like literally hoovers it up. And you're gonna sit there and wait for your sister to finish now, aren't you? See what this one's doing. Oh, she's still got lots left. This bit's now critical timing. Are you ready for the reaction? Hold on a minute. Do you wanna go walkies? Hallie Bob! Incoming. Do you want to go on walks? Should we go for a walk? Yeah! Should we go for a walk? What do you think? <laughs> right, I need to get my boots out of here. What's this? <laughs> you have to. You have to get quick in this house. All right, boots on. Let's get the key, let's get the door open. I know, ready. Release. Release the hounds. No barking in this house. No, no barking. Normally there's a barking sound. Go! Go. <laughs> Do you know, on a beautiful spring morning like this, not a cloud in the sky, bright sunshine, the warmth of the sun on your face. It's hard to believe we're all in the mess that we're in and all in the dire straits that we're in. The idea of this video, by the way, it's not car related at all. It's a bit of escapism. We are very, very fortunate to live where we do. We have private access onto the farm at the back of the house. And there's nobody out here. It's, you never see anybody. It's beautiful. And we can walk out the back and ride out. I certainly do my mountain biking out of here. From the back here, we can go pretty much for 10 miles without ever going anywhere near a road. 
and on a mountain bike there's a good 25 to 30 mile route that we can do that maybe has less than a mile of road work it's we're so lucky to be in the south downs but the girls love it here so every morning we come out we have our walk they have a nice sniff up and down normally the thing you have to be really really careful of oh look there we go um is fox poo oh yes this one loves eau de renard she loves a bit of fox poo so hallie is always up front marching on ahead looking for birds she absolutely loves birds chasing them and we'll, we'll maybe we'll see a few it was we're out there's a shoot on the farm so there's plenty of pheasant around at the moment although actually when the pheasant shooting season's on there's hundreds and hundreds of them right now the, the shooting season's finished so it's all the lucky ones that are left basically and then you always have to look back come on come on dude this one is always lazy slow coach tail end charlie what do you want where's your sister look where is she hey <laughs> don't you jump on me here we go hello mate <laughs> come on then let's go come on yay one of life's great joys is walking a dog now i've absolutely love the fact that lots and lots of you one are dog owners but i've also got lots of schnauzer owners that follow me on the channel as well and a few of them ask why why do we ask or, or why do we go for schnauzer as a breed well interestingly when i grew up we never had animals at home i had a goldfish called boris named after boris becker when he won wimbledon at 17. i won it on the fair that morning and then named him boris at the end of the day um, but we never had dogs and when tracy or mrs petrophead and i got together she already had a dog she had a red boxer maddie she was three years old at the time and it's the first time i'd ever had a dog and i instantly fell in love with dog ownership the joy that that that, that creature brought us was just immeasurable and maddie was an amazing dog so loving just a massive bundle of energy um, and she actually lived until she was 14 and a half um, and then obviously succumbed to old age um, and at the same time something you again might not know is um tracy and i've been together about a year and we decided to try and find a sport or an activity that um that, that we could do together and i'd done a little bit of horse riding in the past because a friend of mine is a keen rider and had horses at home tracy had owned horses before so we decided to have some horse riding lessons together um, we really enjoyed that within a year we'd bought our own horse uh, and within three years i was competing at eventing which for those non-horsey people is basically dressage where you make the horse go round in circles and look pretty uh, cross country where you go over big obstacles and show jumping um, and actually this is way back in sort of 2007 uh, we got reasonably good I mean we competed at uh, Gatcombe Princess Anne's back garden we competed at Longleat um, and it was an amazing time of my life we'd be out of competitions most weekends so if you like me pre-car guy I was actually competing at um, eventing and then sadly when we moved here uh, down to Chichester uh, we moved Benson um, our horse uh, into a new yard uh, and he succumbed to something called colic which is basically a twist in his gut uh, and literally we moved him then that night he went down with colic the next morning he wasn't very good at all and he went into um, a veterinary hospital and even though we tried surgery we lost him about a week later um, and that was terrible for us it was a, a real trauma in our lives and then Maddie died literally uh, not long after that so we kind of went from having a horse and a dog our whole life to not having anything and we don't have children so that was a real bummer so um, we tried life without a dog <laughs> it didn't last very long so we started to look at dogs that we could ham have the kind of breeds and we didn't want another boxer because they're quite full on and they're quite big dogs we were looking at small dogs i really like airedale terriers 
So we looked at the smaller version of that, which is something called a Welsh Terrier. And we were really close to getting one of those, but then decided against it. And then a good friend of mine said, have you ever seen or heard of a Schnauzer? Because I reckon you'd like them. So I did a bit of a Google and that was it, sold. Cutest dogs ever. But the really interesting thing about them is that a Schnauzer, first of all, they don't shed their hair. So they're super clean in the house. And secondly, they are hypoallergenic. So if you know anybody who is allergic to dogs, they won't react to a schnauzer. Now I'm not allergic to dogs, I'm terribly allergic to cats. Um, but it, it means that they're just super easy to live with. They are massively affectionate, hugely intelligent, and you can take them on a walk for 10 miles, even though they're only tiny. Look at it, just there, yeah, look. Even though they're only tiny, you can take them for a really long walk and they just love it. And they're just super, super loving. Um, and that's why, so we bought Darcy. And then last, well, about 18 months, two years ago, we started talking about having a second dog to keep Darcy company. A bit of succession planning as well. Although don't tell Darcy that. Uh, and I really like the black and silver one. So Schnauzers come in four colors. You can get a uh, pepper and salt. So Darcy is a pepper and salt. Come here, dude, shows your pepper and salt. No. Uh, so you get pepper and salt, which is maybe the most common color. Uh, you can get them all black, you can get them all white, and then you can get them, Halley is what's called a black and silver. And I've always loved black and silver, so we decided that we wanted a black and silver. Um, and we then started to hunt for the right person, and we're on a Facebook owners group for miniature schnauzers. Big shout out to the posse, by the way, if any of you is watching this. Um, and uh, almost everybody came up with the name of the same breeder. Um, a lovely, lovely lady called Anne, and we went up um, and we were interviewed to see if we were suitable owners. And we passed the interview, luckily, and the rest is history. Along comes the bundle of joy that is Hallie, and she's just a super, super dog. Uh, interestingly, her, she's a very, very well-bred show dog, so her father was a champion at Crufts, and you can see it in the way she moves. She's got this beautiful gait and beautiful presence, really, really well-bred dog, but she's just the most cute and affectionate dog. She just wants to be with you all the time. She just wants cuddles all the time. Okay, right, let's, right we're gonna try some... No, no barking, we're gonna try something now. You ready? Now, come here a minute, here, sit, sit. Oh, good girl. Darcy, come here. No, you're sat down ready. Now, you stay. Stay. Ah, ah, oh, sit, no. Sit. Sit. Stay. Stay. Wait. 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 Uh, did I say come? No, I didn't. Oh, you're so rubbish. Come on, Doss. <laughs> Come on, slow coach. God, we're always waiting for, aren't we? Hey, what are you doing eating crops? Huh? What's your obsession with eating crops? You're a dog, not a cow. Come on, Das. Dude. See, look, Taylor and Charlie again. This is the hard bit. So I'm now walking up Kingly Vale, which is a nature reserve. I believe during the war it was used as a kind of rain, so there's a few areas here where they were finding unexploded munitions until not that long ago. And there's lots of local tales of hauntings and spooks and ghouls and that kind of stuff. I don't really get that in any ancient monument. Get me out, out of breath I am. My God. See, this is why I need to be out doing more exercise.
And you. Ready? <laughs> Look at that. Hey, beautiful is that? And we're getting there. We are now on top of Kingley Vale. What an absolutely beautiful view. Do you reckon, hey? Done it. Now then, let's go over there. The devil's bumps. So here we are at the top of Kingley Vale. Someone has a lot to say. What do you reckon, hey? This is just so beautiful. So, little bit of history thrown into the vlog. Uh, these two things, they're called the Devil's Bumps and they are ancient burial mounds. They've been here thousands of years, but they're on top of this hill and you've got such an amazing view and it won't come out on camera at all, but over that way, it is a little bit misty, but you basically got the Isle of Wight and Chichester Harbour, Hayling Island to the right and the Wittering's just over that way. If we spin round this way, over there you can um, maybe make out Chichester Cathedral and to the left you've got Goodwood, so you've got the Goodwood Motor Circuit. You can see the top of the Rolls-Royce factory and then bear round to the left even more. That's where the Goodwood Estate is, so Goodwood Our House is kind of down that way somewhere. And then you spin this way, it's just beautiful. So there you go, I just wanted to bring you some escapism on this miserable time where so many of you are locked in your house. You've come on a morning walk with me and the pups. I've given you a little bit of background about my life with animals as well, but I hope you've enjoyed this one. If you have done so, please give me a thumbs up. Comment below are always welcome. And if you haven't done so already, please subscribe to Petroped for plenty more content to come. I promise automotive content will be the main focus of this channel, but today was just a little bit of fun. But I hope you enjoyed it. Anyway, I want to send a big message out to all of you guys. Hang in there and stay safe.